welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Gunsmoke. Original air dates March 31st, 1957, and the title is Chicken Smith. Gunsmoke. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun Smoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. That Arkansas River is. He was right about it. But I sure wasn't going to let on. Who was right, Chester? Oh, some fellow from San Antonio. He was in there in Long Branch last night bragging about Texas. I told him they got rivers there that's every bit as bad as this one. Well, did you tell him to hang around till the spring rains hit? I did. I sure did tell him just that, Mr. Dillon. Hey, Matt. Chester. Uh, hello, Doc. <laughs> you fellas tired of walking? Not if it means risking our lives in that broken down buggy of yours, Doc. Yep, well, uh, this will outlast the three of us. Good as the day it was made. Uh, it's the biggest eyesore in Dodge City, Doc. Why don't you take it out of the river bottom and burn it? We'll start a collection to help you get a new one. Oh, no, look, hear me. Let's look yonder. There's a fight, Mr. Dillon, in front of the lady gate. Yeah, come on. We'll see you later, Doc. Never later, nothing. I haven't seen a real good fight for a week or more. <laughs> Why, that's Chicken Smith, Mr. Dillon. All right. One side. Will you let me through? Will you let me through? Well, forevermore, that Prag Loomer he's fighting with. And he's beating the daylights out of him. Oh, golly. Hey. All right, Prag. You, you had enough now? I'll show you who's had enough. All, All right, right. Come on, then. I'll make a move toward that gun, Prag. Some folks would call it self-defense, Marshal. Chicken Smith never carries a gun, and you know it. But get on your feet now and forget it. All right, everybody, move along now. Break it up. Come on, move along now. Now, what started this? I reckon we'd just better say it was something personal, Marshal. I see. Doc, suppose you could take this pair over to your office and patch them up a little? Well, I will if they come separately, but I don't want another dogfight starting right underfoot. Won't be no trouble as far as I'm concerned, Doc. I already had my say. Well, I ain't. But I will before I'm through. I'll pass your offer, Doc. I reckon I'll heal all right alone. Well, suit yourself, Prag. Come on, chicken. Yeah. Let's see if we can restore your normal ugliness. You know, Chicken Smith's not ordinarily the kind of a man to start a fight, Frank. Well, he started this one. Now, maybe he figured he had a reason. Well, I guess it rankled him some that I was talking to his wife. And she wasn't objecting none. Now, Ellie's not one to use her head sometimes. Is that her name? Ellie? Forget her, Prague. And him, too. If he turned up with a bullet, then he might know where to come now, there's more than one way of getting even, Marshal. I'll see you later. Uh, now, there's a man that can be mean without even trying, Mr. Dillon. A uh, prag mm. Yeah, I guess he can. Come on. 
I swear I just wouldn't have figured Chicken Smith had it in him. A fellow that raises hands and gathers eggs ain't usually one to rear up like that. Oh, Marshal. What? Oh. Hello. How are you, Ellie? Marshal, I I just wanted to explain that what happened there was just a big misunderstanding. Well, I never saw that man before in my life. No. I, I took some eggs into the store and he was standing in front. He just passed the time of day with me, was all. I I didn't know him from Adam. I still don't. His name's Prague Loomer. He bought the Lady Gay Saloon a while back. Well, he's right handsome, you know, and in, in a kind of a strange way. He's a good man to stay clear of, Ellie. Oh, Marshal, I, I hope you don't think that... Well, I, I mean, I, I certainly will stay clear of him. I sure wouldn't want another misunderstanding. Neither would I, Ellie. The next one might be fatal. Well, I'll try one more. Yeah, let me study this on the fence rail now. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's hidden where it's aiming, all right. I guess Andy got the kink out of it. Mm, he always does. Takes old Andy a month of Sundays to fix a gun, but once it's done, it's done right. Yeah. Well, there's no point in burning up any more ammunition. Marshal, you out back there? Oh, uh, yeah, I'll be right with you. Sounds like Chicken Smith, Mr. Dillon. First time he's been to town for over a week. Yeah, I know. Out shooting one of your prisoners, Marshal? <laughs> no, no, just testing a gun I had fixed. Well, how's the chicken business? Oh, tolerable. Few of the hens starting to set now. Need some more warm days, though, and a couple of rains. Well, I guess I don't know very much about them. Smarter than cattle any day. How's that so? Why, Sure. Chickens can tell when the weather's going to change and the storm's coming and knowing there's a hawk overhead. Hens will run straight to the rooster for protection. They'll stay there as long as there's any danger. At least the older ones. Some of the pullets, they stray once in a while. Them's the ones that get killed off. I see. A man can learn a lot watching a flock of chickens, Marshal. Like the way a rooster will fight to the death to protect his hens. Here's some people never heard of that. You mean people like Prague Wilmer? I reckon he's heard of it now. Right? Okay, he's heard of it. Well, let me give you a piece of advice, Chicken. Last week you knocked Prague around some and you got away. A man's got a right to fight for what's his. Prague's not a man to take a beating easy, not while he carries a gun in his belt. Yeah, maybe I ought to get one. You never packed a gun in your life and you wouldn't know what to do with one if you did. Now, why don't you forget it? That's all I'm saying. It's over and it's done with. Ellie's too pretty for her own good. That's the trouble. And young. Kind of strays out of the yard once in a while. She'll learn. I hope so, Marshal. I sure do hope so. My land, the gracious look yonder at that buckboard. Yeah, that's pretty reckless drive. That's Ellie. Doggone it. I told her once. I told her a thousand times. Oh, yeah. Oh. Marshal. Young lady, you keep handling a team that way and you're going to roll that rig over a cut bank one of these days. <laughs> well, life ain't worth much without a little danger in it, Marshal. You ready to get on back home now, chicken? We've got to try to sell them bullets first, Ellie. I already sold them and all we can deliver from now on. You, uh, new customer? That's right. And a pretty good one, too, chicken. <laughs> Sounds 
Sounds like we're finally getting that brainstorm, man. I've been building up to it for a week now. Well, I suppose the ranchers are happy, but sure hasn't helped business in the long branch this evening. Everybody left early so they wouldn't get cut off by floods in the washes. Well, you can still count on us, Miss Kitty. There ain't no wash between this here saloon and the jail. <laughs> you know, Chester, if there was, you'd still manage to get trapped on this side of it. <laughs> well, if a man's going to get stormed in someplace, he could do a lot worse than the Long Branch. Well, he might do better, too. Over well, the Lady Gay, you'd get three fried chicken twice a day. <laughs> I ain't been over there even once during the whole two weeks, and I ain't aiming to go. Not as long as fried gloomers run the place. <laughs> Giving away free fried chicken at the bar twice a day, I don't know. Well, to draw a trade, so he says. Well, maybe that's his reason. The boys who started calling it the Chicken Smith Hour. Chicken Smith? Oh, so Prague gloomers their new customer, huh? And I suppose Ellie has to deliver them every day or so. That's not only that, Matt. She's been slipping into town at night. Real late at night. Oh, hey, hey, give her more oh, clothes that door, Doc. What's hey, the matter with you? I'm gonna... All right. Man can't come through the door without opening it, can he? Oh, oh hello, yeah, Matt. Matt Kitty. Gosh, you look like a drowned rat. Well, we're getting ourselves a raise, so I'm out there, young lady. It's coming down in barrels. Front Street's already starting to float. Yeah, oh, oh see. Guess who I just saw on the way over here? Ellie Smith, out in front of the Lady Gay. Well, I think it's time I had a talk with her in Prague. No, Matt, there's no law. And besides, he won't like it much. No, I'm sure he won't like it much. <laughs> What's on your mind, Marshal? Frag, I want to talk to Ellie, too. Where is she? Ellie? Oh, well, I guess you mean Ellie Smith. Where is she? Now, what makes you think she'd be here at the saloon this time of night? She was seen here, Frag, tonight and other nights as well, so don't go to the bother of lying. Man's personal business ain't no concern to the law. I don't figure it's personal when it's heading toward a killer. <laughs> now, Marshal, it's too late to stand around spinning yarn. <laughs> Now, I ask you a question, Prag. Where is she? I don't know. She was here, wasn't she? She left. Twenty minutes ago. All right. <sighs> left for where? Home, I guess. She was driving the buckboard, and I, I saw her off. You let her leave alone on a night like this with the flash floods running in another gully between her and her farm? She ain't no lookout of mine, Marshal. She's Chicken Smith's property. Or at least she was. I told you there was more than one way of getting even, didn't I? You're going to be sorry for that, Marshal. Am I? Anything, Chester? No, she didn't try to cross here, Mr. Dillon. Looks like she turned north along the bank there. Well, there's another port up there about 100 yards. Couldn't have been too long ago. Wheel tracks ain't rained out yet. Well, let's ride up that way. Yes, sir. Be a whole lot easier if we had some daylight. A man can't always pick and choose. She could have, though, doggone her. Crazy fool stunt tearing around in the middle of the night, storm like this. Our life's not worth much, according to her, unless it's got some danger in it. Well, I wish she'd find some kind of danger that don't keep me up all night riding around in the storm. Look out, Chester. That bank's all undercut along there. Yeah, my God, it sure is. Breaking off and falling into the water all along the side of the... Mr. Dillon, look! Huh? Yeah, I see it. 
horses must have broke clear. It's only the buckboard down there. Uh-huh. Come on. She might be hanging on the other side. Huh? Now it's been rolled, Chester. It's messed up pretty bad by the current. Well, let's see if we can find her. But where, Mr. Dillon? I don't know. Downstream somewhere. <laughs> Yonder he is, Mr. Dillon, feeding his hands. Uh-huh. Well, morning, Marshal. Morning, Chester. How about checking? Good morning. You turned out nice after the storm. Yeah, I did. Come on, Chick. Come on. Come get it. Here, Chick. <laughs> I come out pretty lucky with my poultry here. Only three bullets lost their heads, run out into the storm, struck to drown for their trouble. Oh. The rest of them stayed in their coops and come through safe and sound. <laughs> Look at them eat. They're always real hungry after a rain. Check them. I, uh... I'm afraid I got some bad news for you. I reckon I already know what the news is. I went looking for her when the storm come up last night. I found the buckboard. Note there was no use looking any further. You found her, huh? Yeah, about a half mile on downstream. Mm-hmm. Kind of where I figured she'd be. She was a good wife, Marshal. Right sorry to lose her. She was too pretty. She was too young. Only trouble. And I guess the farm will get lonesome without a woman, huh? Yeah. That's how I look at it, Marshal. Ellie been slipping out at night lately. Going into town. I've been puzzling over it, not rightly knowing what to do. Now, of course, there ain't nothing to do. I, uh... I'm sorry about it, Chicken. Mighty kind of you to ride out and tell me. Now you just wait till I finish feeding these hens. And I'll ride in with you, Marshal. Save you a trip back out. Well, what do you mean? After I found that buckboard last night, I rode on into town. I wanted to see Bragg Loomer. You'll find him when you get back to town. Find him? I took your advice, Marshal, about not knowing how to handle a pistol. I took my shotgun, the same one I use for hawks. It worked just as good on Prague. Only took one shot. Of course, you understand, I was closer to him than I ordinarily get to a hawk. Come on, come on, chickies. Come on, get your breakfast. and directed by Norman MacDonald. Stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Featured in the cast were Parley Bear as Chester, Howard McNear as Doc, and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. George Walsh speaking. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on 
gun smoke. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day and thanks for listening.